What's going on, family? Robert here. So Peter says to the church that has been dispersed out in Jerusalem and been distributed around the world, these words in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone. So we are in this, this study, which I am calling the study of apologetics. And apod apologetics, if you missed the first devotional, is just to give a defense. To give a defense for the hope that lies within us. To give a defense for why we believe that the Bible is true. To give a, a defense for why we can trust what Jesus did and said are actually actually occurred. And so the very first thing, one of the most predominant things, one of the most predominant proofs that we can know that the Bible is true is what they call fulfilled prophecy. Yes, fulfilled prophecy. The Bible is over 25%. A quarter of the book is prophecy, things that God had told in the past that came to pass exactly as he said that they would. We can even look at the very first prophecy in the Bible all the way back in the book of Genesis 3.15 where it says that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. That is a foreshadowing to Jesus and his victory over sin and death on the cross. But Jesus isn't the only one who can fulfill prophecy, though he fulfilled a lot. We can go to the book of Daniel. Daniel, that talks about the four world rulers that, occur, that would occur after his death. The, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. And he details with such accuracy what would occur in the future that a lot of people don't even believe that Daniel wrote the book. That it was somebody who wrote it back after the fact and says that Daniel wrote it. That's how accurate the Bible is when it comes to fulfilled prophecy. And, and guess what? Even Jesus fulfilled what some people believe to be over 300 prophecies in his lifetime. How can you, how can you make up where a person is going to be born? How can you make up the fact of how they're going to die on a cross that Jesus did before crucifixion was ever a thing? Brothers and sisters, we can give a defense. We can have proof. We can be assured that the Bible is God's inspired word because of fulfilled prophecy. But here is the hope that we have. Not all the prophecies in the Bible have been fulfilled. There's some prophecies in the book of Revelation that says that one day a new heaven and a new earth will come down and we will have no more tears, no more suffering. None of all those bad things will be here anymore. We can look forward with hope to that day. And the reason why we can look forward is because we can look back to what God has done, his past faithfulness, and believing based on what he has done that he will fulfill what he has for us in the future. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today that one of the primary and most important aspects to know that our faith is true is the fact that we see God fulfilling prophecy exactly as he says. And so if God has fulfilled what he had already said, what does that mean to the things that haven't come to pass yet? It means to me that if God did it then, he would do it now for us too. So be encouraged today that whatever God says he will do, he will do. And that is how we can give a defense for the Bible, for Jesus, and for the hope in us. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for fulfilling prophecy, showing that you are all-knowing and sovereign over every circumstance and situation. And that gives us hope today. It not only gives us the ability to have a defense for what we believe, but it gives us hope that the things that you have said that haven't come to pass will come to pass. Allow that to strengthen our faith and allow us 
have confidence that everything you say is accurate, true, and correct. It's in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. So thank you for studying with me. Come back as we continue to walk through apologetics, looking at how we can give a defense for the faith we have.